CataractCoach.com, the secrets to avoid corneal edema after cataract surgery. Look at that picture. Avoid that. Here's how. Now, when we do a cataract surgery, our goal is to give the patient fantastic vision. An added bonus is if we can be minimally invasive during the surgery in order to give the patient a very fast recovery. If we can achieve a clear cornea and great vision on post-op day one, that's much better than having the patient wait a week or two to recover clear vision due to having a cloudy cornea or corneal edema or decimate folds. So what are the secrets? Well, step one is you want a wave of good viscoelastic. Not the stringy stuff, not spaghetti. You want a wave. Watch carefully. You want to use a good, high-quality, dispersive viscoelastic, and that wave is going to coat the corneal endothelium. If it comes out like spaghetti string, it's not going to coat. That's very important. Now, step two, you got to make a great incision. It allows for appropriate placement of the instruments. It'll seal well at the end. This is going to help avoid corneal edema. Here, I'm doing a single plane incision, and you want to have it very repeatable, very clean architecture, very well sealing. So these are two things right off the bat that are important. But wait, there's more. Now we want to have the surgery itself be relatively quick. Now the goal is not speed, the goal is efficiency. No wasted movements, no wasted steps. And to achieve this, you want to cut out all the extra parts of the surgery that don't benefit the patient. If you can make a beautiful capsular rectus like this with just the forceps, stop using a cystotome. You don't need a cystotome to do cataract surgery. That's just an additional step. All these additional steps together prolong the case and you get more inflammation. If you do a 10-minute cataract surgery versus a 30-minute cataract surgery, you tell me which one is going to cause less inflammation in the eye. I think we know the answer. Now, number three, what should we do? Put more viscoelastic to protect the corneal endothelium after you complete hydrodissection. So we're going to add more protective dispersive OVD right there in the center prior to putting the phaco probe in the eye. Because the hydrodissection caused you to lose viscoelastic. You may not realize it, but it's true. Now, we're going to go inside the eye, chop the nucleus, and we're going to break it up. And here's where it's important to use a very efficient way of nucleofractus. How do you break up the nucleus? Well, divide and conquer is inefficient and requires a lot more energy than phaco chop. So try your best to transition to these lower energy modalities. So minimize phaco energy, use phaco chop, stay in the capsule bag, employ phaco power modulations, and easy on the foot pedal. The less ultrasonic energy delivered in the eye, the better it is for the patient. So use a pulse mode. Use a variable duty cycle. And be judicious on your delivery of phaco energy. Use as little phaco energy as possible during the case. Now, it's not just the ultrasonic energy that causes corneal edema. It's also the amount of fluid you run through the eye. So you want to minimize that amount of fluid as well. So keep your settings appropriate. Don't waste time in the eye. Remember, what's the volume of the anterior chamber? A quarter of a cc? If you add an empty caps or bag and posterior chamber, maybe another quarter of a cc? That's a half cc. If you're going through more than one bottle of balanced salt solution, well, one bottle is probably 500 cc's. And think about that. 500 cc's means you're turning over this half cc anterior segment a thousand times and we go to that second bottle of BSS, even worse. So an established and experienced surgeon should be able to do a cataract surgery with very little fluid. 100 cc's or less of fluid is very common. 
for an, in the hands of an experienced surgeon. And the less fluid you put through the eye, the better. The less ultrasonic energy put inside the eye, the better. If you are going to deliver this energy in the eye, again, stay away from the corneal endothelium. Operate at the iris plane or even deeper in the eye in the capsule bag. But avoid operating near the corneal endothelium. So here we're filling up our capsule bag. You see our capsular rexus there. We're going to load up our lens and deliver the lens. And so this case so far has had a very minimal amount of trauma. You can see the eye looks great. You also notice that we're very careful in pivoting in the incisions. If you distort your incisions and you see wrinkles in your cornea as you're operating, well, you're going to see those same wrinkles the next day on the first post-op visit, and they're going to persist. So to avoid those, you got to pivot in the incisions. Now, our next important point is removing all the viscoelastic from the eye, including from behind the eye well. If you leave viscoelastic in the eye, it can cause blockage of the trabecular meshwork and a very high spike in the intraocular pressure. And if the eye pressure goes very high, 40, 50, 60 cc's, uh, 60 millimeters of mercury or more, this patient's going to have a painful eye and a lot of corneal edema just from that increased intraocular pressure. So make sure you get all the viscoelastic out of the eye from behind the eye well as well as the angle of the eye. And we've showed you videos in the past about the angle sweep method. Look it up on cataractcoach.com if you're unfamiliar. The angle sweep is a way of making sure there's no retained viscoelastic in the angle of the eye which is the most common place. That's very important. And then finally, our last important point is use only mild hydration to seal the incision. If you have a good incision with proper architecture, it should seal with just a little bit of hydration. Look how I do the roof of the incision back and forth just a little bit. I do not advocate these huge, white spots against the lateral walls of the incision. Those induce a lot of temporary astigmatism, and those can even spread towards the center of the cornea if you're too aggressive in the hydration, and that will cause even central corneal edema. So be very judicious in this. So these are my important six take-home points. I assure you, you have the skills. Just practice. You too can deliver clear corneas after surgery. I want to remind you to go to cataractcoach.com, sign up and join our free email list, a new video and an accompanying article every single day delivered right to your inbox. And you can also submit your video for consideration and review anonymously or not here on cataractcoach.com. Thanks for watching.